Hey everybody, I am back out here in my shop, and uh, I'm sorry I ain't been making a whole lot of videos lately. I have been very busy. Um, we have this big thing in my shop. This is the 99 Elkhorn that we got for uh, nothing, for free. And if you will look um, right up here in the corner some, at some point in the video, I'll put that link to that video of this thing and how we got it for free, and you'll like that. If you're using a cell phone, I think there's like a little arrow right about there. You can go down there and push that little arrow, hit it with your finger, and it'll show you more details about what we're talking about here. Um, everything that we're going to show you here in the video or whatever I'm going to use, I'll make sure to put a link down below so you don't have to ask. You can just go check it out yourself. So what we've got here is we have removed all of the windows, all of the exterior components including the water heater. Now, what we learned is that our water heater is new. And I took my little borescope camera and shot it down inside this thing, and it's never had water in it. We were lucky that whoever had this, there was a little T um, that uh, bypasses, a bypass for the water heater, and it was twisted, and it had that little um, like safety wrap clip on it uh, to where you're not supposed to turn it until you read the manual type thing. And they never did. It's never had water in it. We did end up at about 5,000 wasps of three species. Um, just mind-boggling, this camper. It's a camper. The previous owner had this in a, in a building for a long time. But however, when they used it, they put silicone around everything. Nothing leaked. There's no water damage anywhere. Pulled the water tank, pulled everything in there. So we're going to get in a little more detail here. Now I want to show you this. This is a this is um, what I'm working with. I don't like it when it blurs. Shitty ass Samsung. But there is the PEX stuff. We we're going to repex the whole trailer. This is the PolyQuest that was inside this trailer. Really, really not not good. None of it leaked. It was fine. There was uh. No real evidence of much water activity, in fact, at all. Um, over here, there's PEX. And if you guys look down below the video, I'll put you links to where you can get those. If you have an RV, them right there in the center of the picture, those things are what you're going to want, both 90 degree and straight. And what I'll do, I'll tell you what, look under the video for a, a link that just says like an influencer link. And that's a link that I can actually like make a page, and I'll put everything I can on that page, and you can look at some of the other little blocks that might be in there, might have something that'll interest you um, as far as things you could use to do this kind of stuff or upgrade your kind of stuff. Over here, um, I want to show you this. It's Dynaflex 230. This is the stuff I've used for almost 11 years doing RV repair, and I will not use anything else. It's not what you use on the roof. It's what you use on hatches, windows, doors, things like that. Uh, seals, like any of these seals, that's what you use is Dynaflex, and there's a reason for it. It don't go bad. It don't um, ever dry out. I want you to look at what we're working with here. We're working with redoing all of this because when the RV manufacturer makes them, they really don't give a damn. The stuff that they usually put on here is called mastic. It's that gray, crumbly crap you might have on your RVs or your campers or your motorhomes. And the reason they use that is they're turning out 50 of these damn things a day. But they don't want to use a liquid adhesive that takes four hours for a full cure. In this case, they don't want to use that because they want to push it out the door as quick as they can. And that's why you get an RV that's rotted out. It's that crap they use on it, that mastic. It's very, very poor stuff. So, I mean, you look up here, and it just yeah, crumbles very, away. Very poor quality. Very poor quality stuff. I mean, look at that. So, if you have an RV, my recommendation is, is pull the windows. Like this one had the screws on the outside, but if you have one with a slipper flange, look for it. If you don't see any screws on the outside, and some of them have the black or, or white strips that'll cover the screws. Make sure you check. But if they don't, look in the slipper flange and there'll be screws. And that goes into the window outer uh, frame. And you can remove those, have help doing it so you don't drop a window. But get the windows out. Safe about it. Clean up. Use some, chem some uh, mineral spirits to clean all that up once you get all that crap off of it. 
clean your window the same way. Kira's down here was cleaning this one, getting it all off of it. And then we're going to use Dynaflex. Seal them up real nice. Put a good heavy bead. A tube like this should do three of those windows um, most of the time. But if you got a whole lot of deeper depressions in your metal, you might end up just one, you know, one tube doing two windows like that. So what we're working with over here for this trailer is kind of a cool thing. Let's get over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is a 100 amp MPPT. Now, it looks like the Epevers made by Y Solar Corp or whatever. It looks like them. This is made by another company. And the reason we wanted this one is because if you're going to put a MPPT in a barn, in an RV, in a warehouse, in a cargo container, in the back of a box truck, this is what you want. The reason is, is it has an intake fan and an exhaust fan. And they're both separately controlled right here. See, that's a 100 amp. Get you focused on that. This one has two huge Toretto transformers in it. It has the full capability of 100 volts and monster wiring in it. There's the fans up in there. See, so get you a view of them fans in there. And the fans are ball bearing fans. They're Masichu, so that's a pretty good brand. I think that's like a Panasonic brand. Down here, you're capable of four gauge wire. So you're talking, you know, four gauge can handle 105 amps. Uh, continuous and 140 amp surge. So very rarely would you see that. But you're going to get 90 amps out of 100 amps conversion on a regular basis with some 100 amp peaks out of this. Now this thing is heavy. Okay, so you're you're not buying something that's a lightweight. It's got huge cooling fins on the back and monster MOSFETs. The MOSFETs are like this freaking big in it. So it's built for that. But we need this because in this RV over here, in this, you won't always be in it and you need it to be able to really cool itself. So it's going to mount in the bathroom above the toilet where there's already a vent and active air movement. So we're going to put it there and that's where it's going to go. Over here, where the original electrical was, uh, behind the stove was about nine and a half inches of depth before you got to the stove. So we're going to be able to, without risk, put about six 35 amp hour batteries in here. And I'm going to cut this and put a larger hatch. I got plenty of those, a larger hatch on here to access those batteries with two little vents up here. And then we will box them in. So the SLA, sealed lead acid, you've seen them, 35UB12350s or something, that we're going to put those in there. And that's a safe location. It originally had a, a very heavy 25-pound wire in there. It's not exactly a loss in, in weight. We are doing a lot of things to reduce weight. The other thing is, of course, is going to be a, a brand-new hood for the uh, stove up there. So a new one and the heater's having its thing completely cleared out but i don't know if you can see in there that thing was just so packed full of wasp it was unreal i mean you know a lot of these heaters are um and i suggest pull these out a lot of people don't know that if you take it out from the outside it just actually it's a slip fit so you can remove these heater exhaust really easy and clean them out because man they'll get so full of wasps you got a fire hazard there or your heater won't run there see all the wasp debris you're we haven't cleaned this totally but you'll see that if you take these out remove them and pull them out they actually just they'll act like they're possibly tight and if you just kind of keep working them a little bit they'll pop loose and they'll slide out and get them cleaned don't 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 leave these full of wasp or whatever and those metal screens they put over them they in themselves can be a fire risk because if you already have a dirt dauber or a, a wasp paper wasp nest in it that'll just get caught and actually drawn right back into the furnace itself don't do that don't use those now the water heater will go back in and i'm going to actually do a foam job on it so it's much higher efficiency including an electric element right down in there the shower of course Nice to have one for your naked butt on the side of the highway. And back here is the original battery box. And we're going to have three 35 amp hours in that. And I, yes, I'm rigging all of this for heavy wiring. 
So I have one ot for our big wine because we're going to have a 2001 inverter. Now, in here, the stove was fully pulled. And if you guys are wondering how does he get the stove out, well, it's not too complicated. The stove easily comes out. Let me get some light in here. The stove easily comes out by a few screws. There's one there, one there. Now, some of yours might differ and they might be at an angle. But you can take, typically, you'll see them. They're Phillips generally or square head number two. They'll come out. This stove, look at this. This is from dirt daubers. All that. The stove was almost never used. Look at the top. It's like brand new. But the dirt daubers, you could see, if, you, if I can flip that over, I got to light my hand. So if I can flip that over, it's just the same thing as this surface from Wasp. It's just crazy. And we thought originally it was a lot of other things, but it's all Wasp. But we've cleaned out everything. We're going to repex and repipe. The wasp shorted out the controller down here. The convert that's called this is called a converter. So it takes AC, makes it into DC. But one of the things I'm going to show y'all, and y'all gonna love this, is I'm actually going to feed that power through a solar controller. Because you know an RV batteries. This is going to be a good video for you guys. Stay tuned. I've got this repaired, put new diodes in it. But the next video is going to show you how to put a solar controller on one of these. One of them right there. All right. Now, the reason is, is because these charge batteries, but they charge them at up to 16 volts. And they don't have a battery temperature sensor. That's a bad deal. The ladder is going to have to be moved out an inch to mount the air conditioner I've got to put into this hole. The propane bottle. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a video that's going to show you, because these are a pain in the ass, these horizontal bottles. I'm going to show you in a video how we're going to handle that. That's going to be good. So we're going to have about four or five videos on things related to this. Now, we know this refrigerator is new. They did a crap job because they had to change it out. It had one of these kind of doors, and they had to change it out to this uh, different door on it. There's its hatch over there. But they did a really crap discount silicone job. So we're removing that just like we're doing all the rest of them. And sealing them up. So everything else is around here solid and intact. But there's the video. There's that cool controller over there. There's Anna Mae. There's Emma. What? Don't look away. And there's Jenna, the other crazy McNabb. But you guys, stay tuned. I'm just giving y'all a little update of what we're building and what we're fixing. So even converted all these to LEDs and got them working. That was a good thing. Y'all stay tuned. This is going to be our gold prospecting trailer, camper, that me I can take me and the kids down into Nevada, down to gold fields, where we go do a little bit of mining, placer, other things. And y'all watch for it. We might even be doing some videos of us out there cleaning out the culprits of gold dust. That's always fun. Right, Kate? I said, right, Kate? KD. Y'all look at all these border collies out here. It's amazing. Sorry about that blurring out there. So, like I said, yeah. guys, what? We're going to go gold prospecting. Gold prospecting? Yeah, gold prospecting. When are you going to finish this RV? Huh. I'll tell you. Probably get more work out of them. Come on, guys.